YouTubers, Brian Proctor back again, and I am putting a team together. I call it the Avengers Initiative. And I can't do that because somebody else has got that name. So well, let's just do this. Up to now, I've been working on the series, creating your own comic books from start to finish. And if you have stayed with me through that series, by now you should have gotten your team together or your character together. So once you have drawn your characters and fleshed them out in the whole nine yards, what's the next step? The next step is showing them to the world. You have to advertise. So what's the best way to show your characters? That is by doing pinups and posters. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to put your team together in exciting, eye-catching ways so that people will see it, buy it, love it, the whole nine yards. Okay, so enough of that. Let's get going with the video. All right, let's get this thing started. Um, first, let me show you this. Let me show you this. These are my characters. This is a pinup. One of the pinups that I've done with my characters. And this is another one that I've done. And this is basically what you kind of want to get. You want to get your characters together. So in this video, I'm going to show you a few ways to do that. So as I say, let's get started now. The first thing we want to go over is the poll again. And you're probably if you've been with me through the other videos, you're like, no, not the poll again. But Somebody might have just seen the uh, thumbnail and clicked on it and have no idea what I'm talking about. So very quickly, let's go with the poll. And what I'm seeing by the poll is basically, just like say, if I took a tall pole and put it in the ground, it shouldn't take too long. And you stood up by the pole. And this is you standing by the pole. And you're looking at this pole. Now there are stripes across this pole. Here's your eye lot. Here's your eyes right there. And you're looking at this pole. And here's a stripe right here. When you see this stripe, it's going to be straight across the pole. Now, as you look up, each pole, each line after that is going to start curving just a little bit. And each one a little bit more, a little more, a little more, a little more until it gets to, to the very top. Same thing. Now, if you look under this pole, um, under this line from a standing position, the lines are going to start curving the opposite way. And that's just perspective. And this is very important for what I'm about to show you. So if you kneel, if you knelt down to like this position, this line here, you would see it as a straight line, not a curved line. And as you looked up, the other lines would start to curve up. So as I say, this is a perspective thing. And I have videos on perspective. And if you need to do more sp perspective, you can check those videos out. But I don't want to get too much into this but this is important for what's about to happen next. Okay, so we got that. So you imagine this pole is a person right here. There's another person. And you're looking at this person. Let's just say you're looking at this person down here. You got down on your knees or something and you're looking at that person. So if this person has stripes across him, the same way the pole is, Wherever your eye line, eye line meaning that line of sight that you're looking at, that stripe would be straight. And as you look up, it will start curving up more. And the same thing for down more. So um, just offhand, if you had a, a can or a bowl or something like that and you threw it up in the air, it would look like that. You'd see the bottom of that plate or the bowl or the can whatever it would be. Same thing here. Your stripes are going around like that. You see the bottom of it. And if you, you dropped it on the ground, it would be opposite. You see the top of it like that. So keep that in mind as we go along. Okay. So now putting your team together, as I said earlier, once you get your characters together, you get them colored. Um, you, you know, you got everything ready. Now it's time to put it together. Now these are some basic ways to put your characters together in a poster or a pinup so that people can see them or you can show them off. The first way is I would that I call now there might be different names for these the way that people are standing but nobody called me and told me so this is the way I this is what I call them and to make it more easier for you is the bowling pin pose. Now let me cover this one up just because we want to talk about this one first check my camera okay so if you ever go on bowling and you see the bowling pins standing all out 
in the alley or down the alley. It's kind of like that. So this is going to be your first pose that we're going to talk about. You have your characters, you put them in line like you would see bowling pins. And this is your eye line right here. So that means when you're looking at these guys, they're going to have to be drawn on a kind of an upward angle. And from here, and they, these are guidelines, basically guidelines from here. So your, your, your um, ah, point, point is over here. And this is a two point perspective. Uh, I can't think of what that point is called right now. Forgive me. It'll come to me later. So these are your guidelines here. So if you draw these lines on your character as you're drawing, this is going to be where the curves are right there. So that's your first one. And notice that these guys, because these guys' shoulders are straight across, it's going to basically just be up and down. This guy here is leaned that way. His his shoulders lean that way, so he's going to that vanishing point. That's what I'm trying to say. So this guy's going to that vanishing point. This side, this guy's shoulders is leaned this way, so it's going to go to that vanishing point on that side. And anytime you um, lean your character or you do his shoulders lean, that's going to determine where your vanishing point is going to be. Now this, when they're straight, I could have had the eye line somewhere up here because these guys are straight on. Their shoulders are straight. They're coming straight at me. I'm talking a little fast. I don't want to lose what I'm saying. I, I want you guys to catch on. And I'm losing my voice for whatever reason. Okay, so that's one way that you can pose your characters, the bowling pin pose. Now, the second way is the reverse bowling pin pose. And it's just, if you take this guy and you pushed him back and you brought the others forward, you'd have that. That's another way. You have your leader here and your, your followers here. And you can have uh, another guy here. As long as you, and all of these... When I have the red, that's your perspective lines. As long as you keep the head on that line and the feet on this line, your characters will come out to be the right size for one another. As long as you keep that in mind. But if you go off, if you have a head up here somewhere and the legs down here somewhere, and I'll, I'll, I'll make that, that shoulder's gonna follow that line, those lines here, then this guy is standing on another plane. He's standing way out here somewhere where everybody else is standing back there. So it throws his perspective off. You can do that, but if you're trying to keep in the line of this particular pose, then you you can you can't you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. But as I say, you can do that because I did that here. You know, had some characters bigger, some characters smaller. And you know, just it's just the way I designed this this um, this poster, the pinup. All right, as I say, when you your your shoulders are going to follow the lines, and that's how you stay in perspective. So this is another two point, and the the um, vanishing point would probably be here, and the other one would be here. You just follow that line to your vanishing points, and then you can do your shoulders, however. But these are going to be on this side. And that's going to be on that side. So as long as you have your shoulders and your feet stay on that line, you're good. And this is the eye line down here. It's another below the character, uh, below the characters. And the reason a lot of them, you'll see the eye line is below the characters is because you want your characters to look uh, big, awesome, um, intimidating. So if your character comes into the room, you want that character to be, you know, just larger than life. So you put your your um, the eye line down below the character because it makes it look more powerful and it also makes um you look smaller because he's above you and that's kind of what you want when you do your character so you want to have an eye line your your eye line um below the characters to make it look more powerful and menacing even the villains if the villain comes in the room or he has somebody tied up down on the ground you want the villain to be you know, standing over that person. Your eye line is going to be down here and you, to round it off. You want to keep it round. That's the way you can definitely tell that the person is up and somebody could be on their knees tied up down here somewhere. So you always want to get that below. So you're looking up, the reader's looking up and it looks a little more powerful. Okay. So the next one is, I hope I'm not losing you guys because I'm, I'm kind of going too fast. And I'm trying to go off and I'm going off. Actually, the rooftop pose. 
And you see a lot of this in uh, the Batman, especially Batman. He's always on the rooftop. And that's basically the same thing. It's the bowling pin pose. And instead of going straight across, where is it at? Instead of going straight across, you're coming up in a, um, what is that? A, a triangle type shape. And then you put the people on top of that. Same thing. Your shoulders are going to follow your perspective lines unless he's going straight across unless he's standing straight up because these guys this guy is following that line this guy he's going straight straight up and down too this guy following that one and he's just kind of leaned over so you can see his uh lines curving in a different direction because once you lean down which he's doing then it's going to take a whole different type of uh, uh, shape to get that guy looking right especially at, a, at an up angle so that's another one, rooftop pose. I, now, it depends on what kind of characters you have, how many characters you have, um, you know, what their powers are. These guys can have guns, swords, and so forth. So you might want to put them in a pose where they're holding their weapons and um, striking a pose. But that's something that you would determine by doing your picture, poster, pinup, pose. All right, so the next one is your group shot. And oh, the eye line for that is like way down here. And if you're looking at a picture uh, from a magazine or something and find the furniture and if there's like a dresser or something somewhere in the room, a, a picture, whatever, you can follow the line, one of the lines on the top of like the end of the dresser. And then that will tell you where the eye line or where the vanishing point is gonna be at. Just follow it there. The, the picture would be the same if the picture's on the wall as well. It would be the same. Just find you a photo of something and then follow it. And then that way you will know where the vanity point is and where to, you can put your the lines, your measuring lines, I don't think it's measuring lines, but your, your angle lines and you can draw that. And that's good practice for doing perspective is finding a photograph um, of something, room, whatever it could be. Find your lines and then redraw that. Draw your lines and then draw all your furniture or whatever on there. So next one, group shot. And a group shot is just basically the eye line could be either here in the middle, it could be at the top or at the bottom. Now, the only ones that are actually turned are these guys. And as I say, <clears throat> when you turn somebody, you are creating the um, perspective point. You are now telling where the perspective point is going to be. So it's natural it's going to go off the page, but it's going to be down here somewhere. Now, if I did not turn these guys and had them all straight, the eye line could have been down here, could have been up here, could have been up here. It doesn't make a difference because the, the, the line, I mean, the shoulders are all straight. Now, a group shot is usually when you have a ton of people and you have some in the front and the back, as long as their feet are all on that one line, then they're good because some could be short. Some could be just midgets or just kids or whatever, and some could be extremely tall. So as I say, as long as your, the feet everybody's feet are on that line they're pretty much good this one is kind of the same way as a group shot but this is more of the bowling pin from the top uh, type of position because you can see the line coming down here kind of making that V shape all right the next one is where is it and get my cover up is this one here so this one is i call it a starburst shot because and you'll see that when you have see like groups like um x-men um uh what is it the uh justice league where every where, where it's kind of like almost there's an explosion from the center and everybody's shooting out of that explosion and you just draw this line like this and then you draw your characters coming off of that line in perspective and you could actually group them closer together. I took them out far enough so that you can basically see what was going on. Uh, yeah, it can be grouped closer. And this is the eye line right here. So the eye line would be in the center. So these guys would be a, are, are above it. These two are actually on the line and these two are below. So you would see, so every line <clears throat> would be actually going down for these guys, except this leg, this leg came up. So you'd have to change your lines and this one would be going down the same way as the rest of them. But it's a, it's a good way. I mean, it's, it's an exciting way to draw your characters. 
And as I said, you might have flyers, you might have runners, this guy's jumping, this one is all screwed up. I don't know what happened there, but yeah, that's the starburst shot is what I call actually, as I said, it could have a, a professional name to it, but as I said, nobody called me and said, hey, Brian, this is what it's actually called. I just call it that so that you guys, it'll make it a little easier for you. The next one is the triangle pose. And basically it works with three people and you, you have your people and they're in position, but there's some type of a triangle shape in that position. Like this guy is in the front. He's the biggest. You've got this guy who would be the second and this guy is in the back who's the smallest. And as I say, your eye line is down here. As long as you keep your people's feet on that eye line, you'll be all right. So if I drew another guy like here, as long as his feet are on there, it just looks like he's way in the back, but then you're taking away from the triangle pose. But this one, basically triangle pose. You can bring your people closer together. It doesn't make a difference, but keep them on the um, line. And basically, again, your eye line is at the bottom. So you're basically kind of looking up at these guys to give them a more authority, more power, more, uh, they're making it more intimidating. Next one is, and I think this is like the last one, I think, I think is, nope, one more after that. Let's do this. This is the stair pose. Oh yeah, cover that up and read the star pose. The stairs pose and this one is when you have uh, a bunch of people but they're all on different levels let me stop for a second and see that you can see this let me zoom in just a little bit and i'll zoom back out later so whenever you have a group and they're standing on like a rubble this could be a, like um, a fallen building and each one is on a different type of a rock which is a different level that's what I call the stair pose. And then your, this one, the eye line is right here. So as I say, anything above the eye line is going to have that little curve to it. And these guys too, um, because he's leaning down, his curve takes a different shape. And you have to think about that because you can't do it up because it throws everything off. Uh, was there something else I was going to say about this? Yeah, as long as, if you have three or four people, as long as their feet are on that same line, same down here, same down here. And remember your eye line is here. And because everybody's shoulders pretty much straight across, even his, you can um, put your eye line anywhere you want to. But if this is the leader, one, you want to have him up front. And two, eh, you could have had the eye line down here, but everybody would just be up higher so the next one is what i call the diamond pose let me come out again and that's kind of the same thing as the um starburst shall we say where you have your group people are grouped around and it's kind of like in a diamond type uh, form just like this and usually that works best with four characters and a lot of times they'll have it where you can't see the rest a lot a lot of the bodies cut off because the leader is so big that it cuts a lot of the body off like <clears throat> like this this guy is like the largest one so you can't see some of the people behind him but i decided to make some smaller ones so you can but it's basically like that you know and i just do the little diamond shape and you know you can have the shape because the way I drew this, he couldn't cover these people up, so I did this little diamond shape here. But it's basically kind of like that. You have your, your your leader standing here. He could be running, and everybody else is like coming up from behind him to go do whatever they got to do. And I think there is one more. And, of course, uh, you can always have the close-up. You know, you don't have to show the entire body. You can do the close-up. But if you have, like, some kind of interesting costume, or something and um, you want the people to see it then probably the best pose is the bowling pin pose because you you'll be able to see the co the whole costume now if it's if you've done four or five or six uh, pinups or posters and then you just want a close-up of their face that's perfect because we already know like if this was like Batman Superman blah 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 we already know their costume 
So this one, you would just do more detail on the face. Everybody would have like a snarl or whatever, and the emotions on the face. But as I say, you don't always have to do the whole body. I just had to look for a second. And then you have the overhead position too. And the overhead takes away from the, where is that one at that I was saying? When you're above a person, that gives that person more, well, actually all of them are above. When you're above, oh, okay. When you are above a person or a group, it kind of takes away from their power because you are, basically you're disconnected from whatever's happening. You know, it could be a dead body on the ground here And these guys are all in the room. And by you being above it, the reader, you not only are you seeing the whole thing, but you're you're basically you're disconnected from that. Uh, I'll go into that a little more in a second. But this is another good shot to do your your characters, your team. And for this one, I would have everybody looking up, like the camera's up here, and everybody's looking. They tilted their head up to see the camera if you're doing a group shot like that but as I was saying back on this one if I put the, the dead person right here on the ground and then the feet are like standing over the person the feet are standing, the, the per, somebody else is standing over the person then that puts you right down there on this person's level this dead person's level so the difference between this and that are it's a big jump from this one you're 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 actually separated from what's going on because you're above it you can't be touched you're not part of it you're just looking down now when you're on the same line as this um person that's dead and you have the the person standing over you then you're right in the midst of it so it's a big difference from being looking above and then uh being below it so that is something to think about. That's something to think about. This wouldn't be a good shot for like a powerful team. Make sure you can see that because that is so small. Like if I had created the Justice League and I wanted to show you how powerful they were, I wouldn't do that shot there. I would either do something like this or one of these. Uh, I'm, I'm leaning toward this one here because you know the center character is the main character, but you get more clear shot of the uh, secondary characters when they are closer to you. But then you know the leader is always gonna be in the center of it, just like that one. He's always gonna be in the center. Um, that would be the leader, this would be the leader. Uh, he'd be here, here, down the bottom. It'd be the, the biggest one here, and the leader would probably be right there in the center there. So that's just some things for you to think about when you're drawing your characters. And as I say, it depends on how many characters you have and um, what they're wearing. If you want to focus on the clothes, then you don't want a far group shot like that. I mean, this is good if you have like a bunch of characters. Say like if you did a, a book and you had 20 or 10 good guys and 10 bad guys, this would be perfect just to show all of the characters together and you could put the names of each one so that people would know who they are. But as showing off the team itself, that would be a better shot. And as I said, that's the page I was actually looking for. When you have that versus, when you have that shot like that versus this shot, you can see the difference, um, you know, which one is more exciting. This one because they're above everybody and this one is below so things like that you have to think about before you put your group together and is that in camera no as i was saying there you go it's it's just a big difference between the two especially the way they're they're they're, they're posed together so i don't know how long this video went i wanted to keep it definitely want to keep it under 30 minutes that is a way for you to do your characters, do your pinups, put your team together. So 
with that one, I think that I've covered most of the things that I wanted to say. So I'm going to wrap this one up. And this is still part of the Creating Your Own Comic Book series. I just have not named the titles that, but it's part of it. I, I may need to do that so people won't get lost. But that's going to be it for this video. And um, send me some of your drawings. I want to see what you guys uh, have done or are doing. I, I, I want to keep up with you guys and see that you are learning something. And feel free to write me if you have any questions. I, I think I said before I'm tutoring some people online they're sending me their drawings and i'm pointing out some things that they need to tighten up on or, or some things that you know need to be uh tightened down on so I'd feel free to to email me and send me some things and i'll be free to in my spare time to you know put up some pointers for you guys so that's about it and subscribe and um help my channel grow tell a friend if you know people that are into comics and trying to do their own thing let people people know about my uh, channel and um yeah i appreciate that and we will go from there and i will see you guys in the next video all right i am out all right one last thing i forgot to to say so i want to throw this back in there whenever you do the rooftop shot you cannot show the feet because if you're looking up at this you're going to see more wall and especially with this little outcropping Unless they're standing on the very edge, and that's why I put this guy there. I leaned him over, so he's basically leaning over the wall and looking down, or leaning over the roof and looking down. This is why you see his feet. But when you do anybody else, you won't see their feet because they will be way behind the wall. So his feet would be back here somewhere, past the wall, and his feet would be like here. So you won't see their feet. So that's one of the things that I, I was talking about. And when I keep saying the lines your lines your your guidelines to make them round is basically so you would um how am i going to say this you'd make your body round you know i could keep it flat i keep the lines flat but then you might have a tendency to start drawing flat and another thing is by having the round lines you will know how to put the belt. Let's just say he had a belt and because this line is around it already, you would know to the belt goes around that way, the way the line is. Same thing, if he had a, a collar on a shirt or a shirt or the chest, the chest is gonna curve around like that as well. You're going, everything's gonna follow that curve or those curved lines. If he had a, a shirt, a short sleeve shirt, because you're looking up, it's gonna be like that. But that's basically what I mean when I keep saying uh, follow the lines or the lines. And that's kind of weird. But yeah, that's just, I wanted to throw that in so you won't get lost thinking, oh, I have to put lines on my character. No, you don't. But just like the pole that just tells you how much of an up angle you're going to go. The, the further up you go, the harder the curve you're going to have to make on that, on that um, person. So you know that the person's round already. His belt is going to be like this, uh, a strap, which is different. It's going to curve around. If the person is not flat, uh, whatever wristband is going to curve around. So you already have your guidelines curving around that person at that angle. So those are the two things I wanted to throw in. I think it was something else I wanted to throw in. Um, I think that was it. So yeah, that's it. So again, thank you for watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, tell a friend, and I will see you on the next video. And I'm sorry I chopped some of those things off. I forgot to zoom back out, but I made up for it. All right, I'm out again. Bye. All right, now that you know what you know, go out and show the world. Show me too. Email me with whatever you have. Let me see what your characters, let me see how you put this stuff together because I've still got a long way to go with the series, but I want to start seeing more of what you guys have been doing, learning the whole nine yards. So, okay, stay tuned for the next video. Yeah, and uh, I'll be back when I'm back. All right, I'm out. Peace.